Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brianna, and I'm a third grade teacher in North Carolina. It's been a few years, so. Um, hey, I'm doing something that I don't usually do on July 8th. I am headed into my classroom. I am using today to get prepped for summer school. If you saw my previous vlog, make sure you click here. I did some prep at home. I looked over the materials and I'm just gonna make sure I have like copies and my school computer has like PDF versions of things that I need that I can't access at home. So I'm gonna look over that stuff and yeah, just be in my element in my classroom. So I wanted to take y'all along. If you want to come with me to my classroom in July, then keep on watching. All right, so I talked about this in my previous video and these are my reading lessons. It's kind of like a breakdown of the schedule, but the ones that I chose using this resource. And I am going to go onto my computer now and get the PDFs for all of this so I could see where I'm gonna go with it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I am pulling up the PDFs on my computer and I'm making them into online material. So this is teacher made and I uploaded the file. I have to upload them as one file. So I go to PDF candy. If you have never used PDF candy, this is also life changing. It's literally pdfcandy.com and you can do anything you've ever wanted with a PDF. So I merge the two files together. So it makes one file and then I upload the passage and the little quick check questions and they're super simple. And then you can add a text box, a drop down, a long answer, matching, true or false, multiple choice. So I click multiple choice, and then you click how many choices there are. And then I literally just make the little circles over the A, B, C, D. And then you just, now let me delete this because we don't need it. And then you just select the correct answer. And that's how you set your answer key. So multiple choice is super simple on here. And obviously the kids won't see that when it's on their screen. But I love to use teacher made because it gives the students an option to use the highlighting tool. And this is basically the closest that they're going to see like on the test. They can use the highlighting tool on the test. The questions would be to the side over here, but that's okay. They can get practice scrolling down and scrolling back up to use the text and seeing it on screen to find the answer. And then we're also practicing using paper along the way to jot down any notes and to plug in our answers and all that. So I really liked these questions, but I was skipping this lesson. So I'm gonna give this to them as morning work because I'm a mean summer school teacher that expects a lot from these children. So anyway, then once I have my answers in, I just click exit. It goes right into create an assignment and I choose teacher made because I don't have the pro version. The kids are gonna use their Google account to log in. I like to say, show them their total score. I don't want them to create their own text boxes, but they can draw on the worksheet and that's the element that is very helpful for upper grades. Inserting links, images, recording audio, that'd be cool. But also you can record audio on Seesaw, so. And then I just copy the link and I post it on Google Classroom and the students have access to it once it posts. So my reading is all prepped for the first week. I have student copies if I need any. Then all of the online stuff is uploaded to Google Classroom. I put all of it into TeacherMade, that way they have the highlighting capability because I want them to get in the habit for their test and yeah, I will probably just grab Monday's stuff before I leave. That way I could just look it over and be ready to go. And then every day after school, I'll just either look over the lesson for the next day or take the masters, which are right up front. Well, that's morning work for that day, but the masters with me. That way I can be prepared because time cannot be wasted. And when you have a lot of ADHD children, <laughs> you need to be on the ball or else you could lose track of them very quickly. Now that I'm done 
with reading. I'm gonna quickly look over math and science. My coworker made copies, so honestly, I'm just gonna go along the lessons and see how I can make it engaging. Since all of this is prepped, I'm just gonna look through, make sure it makes sense. I mean, math's pretty straightforward. I really feel like we're just doing math and science, which is a STEM kit. Um, so I have to look into this as well. I really feel like we are doing the math and the science to break up the reading so it's not so reading heavy. So I do wanna bring in like coloring and manipulatives and just, you know, change it up. This is their morning work for Monday. So it is addition and subtraction, which is awesome. And then they just color the answers. So math and a little bit of coloring, that'll take some time. If they don't finish, they can work on it throughout the week if they get done with other morning work. All right, so let me jump into math because then I wanna jump into guided reading and make sure I'm prepped for that. And then, there is a schedule on the board over here that my coworker made. And then we have a different Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday schedule. So I'm just going to remake this since I changed this stuff around. We definitely actually, oh yeah, I'm not going to do math here. I'm going to do reading, guided reading, and then just do math at this block at the end of the day. Maybe she wasn't doing science then. Oh, I also want to move the desks. So we have some friends who were spread out due to behavior. So I just want to give everybody a fresh start. And my coworker did send home progress reports. So I'm gonna see who are my chatty kids and who are my hard workers that I can kind of maneuver in between, you know? because we want everyone to be able to be a hard worker and not be distracted. So I'm gonna rearrange their seats, that way it's not just bringing those kids back in, but it's, you had a break, you had a week off for 4th of July, we're back, new teacher, everybody gets a new seat, we'll see how it goes. Just checking in, math was pretty easy. I mean, I just looked through topics I'll be teaching, finishing up areas, starting doing a day of perimeter, jumping into unit fractions and fractions on a number line. Like I said, my coworker already ran me copies, and then I was kind of just flipping through the lesson a little bit, looking at like the different warm-up activities, suggestions they have, because I mean, I know how I teach area, perimeter, and fractions, but like, if there was any new, fresh, fun ideas just to get the kids out of their seats, moving, doing something different, um, I think I'm gonna look more into that when I'm closer to Monday. Like I said, math is not the priority. So I have the practice pages. I have the book actually comes with pre-made short little PowerPoints, but I took the PowerPoints and I added a slide at the end and put some IXL skills that go with that skill. So if they finish their work and they have time, they have something else to work on. So I'm set with that. And like I said, I'll kind of take a look at the lesson before I do it and sprinkle in some fun things. I don't wanna kill my brain too much right now before I look through everything, but that's all good to go. I'm going to quickly look through science and just see what I'll be doing with that and then I wanna get some work done with guided reading. It's weird, this used to be just like reading camp. It was all about reading and now that it's not, it's like there's so many different aspects to it. I feel like this is even more, I don't know, more, I guess it's because it's all different programs. It's like more than I would do in a typical school year, like phonics, vocabulary, and reading, instruction, and guided reading. I mean, not really, but like, we don't hit phonics hard as a whole group in third grade. So anyway, that's besides the point. I have finished mm -hmm one whole water but i've ran to the bathroom a bunch of times still trying to drink a gallon of water every day i put my teamy greens in my smoothie this morning i only did half a scoop though because i didn't want it to like change the flavor immensely and it was fine i make an almond butter banana smoothie six points on weight watchers five for the almond butter and one for the fat-free milk i had some 
pretzel crisps, the little flat guys, that's three points, but I didn't bring actual lunch. So like I said, I'm gonna look over science and then I'll probably switch things up, move around the room, have the desks moved and um, then check out guided reading. So the science is interesting. I mean, it has this great little reader with all of this information, all of these text features. Awesome, and there's six of them. It has a steam challenge, but I feel like, I mean, maybe I need to read the book to get a better understanding, but I'm just like, they're building a tower out of newspaper to support a camera, and the camera is a can. So they're literally just gonna build newspaper and their materials are that and masking tape. And the test is setting the can on it for 30 seconds and it's empty. I mean, that seems very easy. And it's like, what's, what's the purpose? It seems almost silly, but whatever, we'll try it out. There are a couple activity pages in the lesson plan. Since I'm not teaching science Monday, I'm not gonna worry about this right now, but I think I might pull, there's a main idea and detail sheet in there. So I might like use the book. This is how far my coworker has read to page 14. I want them to understand first what the Landsat camera is because that's what this is all about. So there's like main idea and details that go with the Landsat, like how did it fail, all this different stuff. So I'll probably just finish reading this to them on Tuesday and then have them work with their table to figure out what the details are. And then I'll put like a book on each of their tables or two books on each of their tables. That way their table groups can share. All right, I'm gonna move some desks now. All right, that is done. Those random desks back there have Chromebooks charging on them. I have to wait for the kids to come to figure all that out. Actually, they do have names on them, but a lot of the kids clean them up. And then they have like little STEM projects back there and over there that I need to like raffle off so they could take home. I ended up moving this cubby over because we're not using the cubbies and I needed this group to be moved that way so that this group would fit. I wanted them all as close as possible because these are all students who need to be in the front of the room, you know? I guess it's time for me to take a look at guided reading. I don't think that'll be too bad. Like I said, and I've said it a million times, I just wanna make sure that I'm giving these kids something worth their while, you know? All right, so let me take a look at that. I did grab one of my students' phonics books. This is really neat. Now, it's obviously gonna look different towards the end, so let me go back to the middle here. It has everything that you go through, and then you read these, match them to the picture, so like you're showing comprehension, making compound words, which mixes with our vocabulary program, sight words, and then after we practice that new skill, then they have their spelling, a practice activity, some other practice activities. Like, it's just so cool. And it's interesting because I looked through this child's work and one who has struggled with spelling, very bright, but struggles with spelling. And I, it's just amazing that like, she's being particular about the spelling patterns or the letter patterns that she's learning that day and getting it all correct just beautiful to see like i wish we had this to implement all year long because i think it's so important but unfortunately we do not but i will enjoy it for summer school so i've said this in my previous videos but my coworker and i before summer school even started got five weeks of guided reading prepped with the like a little lesson that goes with the books However, obviously I can do more than just that lesson and I encourage you guys to do that as well. Like there are no true like comprehension questions. So I'm gonna go through this book and write down some questions that I can ask the students while they're reading and then after they're done. Does anyone else love little guided reading books? Like, gosh, they're so beautiful. Kids probably love this too because Especially here, we don't have a color printer, so they're used to seeing things in black and white. We don't have anthologies. Our reading materials are usually black and white, so like seeing these beautiful colors is so important. I have four groups. Obviously, I'm gonna focus on my middle two groups first, get those questions done, and then I'll probably take the other two books home just so I'm not here 
too late. It's almost two o'clock already. Like I said, they're not used to doing guided reading on Mondays. So I'm switching up the schedule. It's gonna be my first day. I can't expect to get everything accomplished. So if I get two guided reading groups in, like that's better than nothing, you know? I just feel really accomplished. I had a little bit of tension earlier, but I put some oils on my neck. It seems to be when I'm on the computer. And so like you see, I have a different pair of glasses every day. These are the ones that I leave at school. And then I have a pair on my like coffee table kind of thing at home, a pair next to my bed. I got like a four pack, I think on Amazon for like $10 of just blue light glasses. I'll, I'll link it down below in my Amazon store. I wear them religiously because I notice it's like that's when it's happening. But like being over here away from my computer, moving around the desks for a while, like I feel fine. So it's just very interesting. Back to work. All right, so I read through the book. It was super simple to come up with 10 questions. I don't know how I got that many. It's just like, ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. Nonfiction books make it super simple too. Does anyone else need to like lean on something thick when they write? Like I hate writing just on a table. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna quickly do the next book. So I redid the schedule. Ha, ah, I haven't written on anchor chart paper with a marker in so long. It's so heavenly, so heavenly. <laughs> Editing Brianna here. I did not end this video. I guess I was exhausted that day and just went home, but it has been a few days. I've been vlogging every day of summer school. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you stick around so you can see how my week has been going. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I've been posting daily updates on there as well. And I've been really active on there. So I'm excited about that Ugh, as everything. Guys, I need a shirt. I do. Okay. Well, I will talk to y'all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.